Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Alan Gray, and I have the distinct honor and privilege of pastoring, quite honestly, the most incredible church this side of heaven, iChurch DMV. Uh, we are in our hybrid service, which means that we're both in person, we're on campus in the building. Make some noise if you're in the house. <laughs> We are also streaming our local congregation um, through our platform, and we're also streaming on our YouTube channel, which will also broadcast to our other outlets. And we are just honored to be able to share this moment with you, to be able to share this moment with God, and to see what it is that the Lord has in store for us today. Well, I always like to start with um, dad jokes. So uh, this is no different than those days. So I've got two dad jokes for you. And as I'm preparing to share those two with you, grab your Bibles, if you will, and turn with me to Luke chapter number six. We're going to be in Luke chapter number six. Uh, we're going to be in verses 12 through 16. Luke is in the New Testament. So if you're not familiar with the way that the word of God is constructed, it's Old Testament, New Testament. We will be in the New Testament. Luke is one of the synoptic gospels, which means a similar a good news writing about Christ. We're going to be in Luke chapter number six. Um, if you have it, um, just hold on to that for a second. And I got two dad jokes for you. Here's the first one. The average person is me. <laughs> average mean. They don't know math. They don't know math. <laughs> you don't know math. You don't, don't know math. <laughs> the average in me. <laughs> All right, I'll, that, that, that went over the head for many. I enjoyed that one because that one makes you think. Here's the second one. Y'all all right? Wave at me to my local congregation that's streaming in. Y'all still all right? Did y'all get the joke? Did y'all get? Okay, good. And remember, the chat is where it's at. The chat is where it's at. So my wife's giving me the thumbs down because she didn't like that joke. Maybe this one will work. I just saw my wife trip and fall while carrying a laundry basket <laughs> full of ironed clothes. I watched it unfold. <laughs> all right, all right. You should be in Luke chapter number six. See, I tell you, they just kind of feed into themselves. They feed into themselves. You can't make this stuff up. Luke chapter number six. Beforehand, grab your Bibles, lift it up, repeat this confession after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. The Word of God. The word of God. Today, the Word of God will transform me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I will never be the same. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I left out a whole line. Do what it says I can do. I can do. Well, y'all know what it can do. Luke chapter number six. Verse number 12. Listen, if you can't have fun. In the presence of God, then your life is a joke. <laughs> Third dad joke. Right? Third dad joke. Okay. Luke chapter number six, verse 12. Here it is. In these days, he went out to the mountain to pray. And all night he continued in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose from them 12, whom he named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter and Andrew, his brother, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, the son of Altheus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Let's look to the Lord in prayer, and as we do, I'm going to challenge you uh, with this tag over this text for our time today. These are the days. These are the days. Eternal God, our Father, how we love you and thank you. And we ask even now that you create an atmosphere where we presently are. That you go from heart to heart, breast to breast, house to house, screen to screen. That you move in such a way that we are able to feel your transformative power in us. So that when we move out of this moment to wherever it is you would take us we could be conduits of transformation for your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this moment. Thank you for allowing us to travail through the challenges, to know that you are still good 
all the time and all the time you are good save heal deliver set a captive free for your glory and our good in jesus name amen these are the days as we prepare ourselves to dive into today's assignment i'm going to challenge you if you're online if you're streaming this the chat is where it's at so please feel free we encourage you to participate even though you're not physically with us you are with us even if you're streaming live if you're a local live or if you're watching this at a later time share in the worship experience by commenting in the chat you can also like share and subscribe at any time um, during this message so then that way our corporate communal body continues to grow these are the days Kevin, I heard something recently that really did arrest me. The second most important move of Jesus reflected in scripture, the thing that only the cross outranks is that he chose 12 disciples. Did, did, did you catch that? I have never thought about the power of that before, that he decided to invest in <clears throat> He decided to move around, surround himself with people, but not just people. He, he selected unique people to do life with, but not just simply to do life with, but to carry significant weight. And not just to carry significant weight, they actually carried the script. When, when my name and your name is mentioned and we're not there to edit what is said, it will be the eyewitnesses to our life that will actually write our story. Our text opens up with a statement that my scholars will no doubt see as a question. In these days, <laughs> what is it about these days? Luke tells us it was in these days that Jesus made the important decision about who would and who would not be with him and him with them. But equally intriguing to me, equally intriguing to me is what days? What was happening in these days? Social unrest? economic uncertainty, governmental corruption, judicial overreach. Honestly, what period of time are we referring Amen. to? Is there anything of significance that we might be informed by with respect to those days and the decision that Jesus made and selecting the people who would write his story. The text does inform us, but let me ask you another question. What has to happen in order for you to look for help? What, what has to occur before you possibly put yourself in a position to be helped? What are the parameters, the motivations, the circumstances that cause your level of engagement into the lives of the people that are around you? According to our text, the Sabbath has become suspect. I, I didn't read it in your hearing, but let me see if I can prove it. Look back in Luke chapter number six, because our chapter opens up in verse one with these words, on the Sabbath. Right. <laughs> then when you drop down from verse one to verse six, the text goes on to say, on another Sabbath. Mm. In each of these instances, the culture and the church had come to misunderstand, to misuse the Sabbath. These are the days. Mm. Look around. S seriously. L look around. How do the people you 
know? How do the people you're connected with comprehend the Sabbath? One of the pillars of which I church DMV stands on is rest. Rest is first introduced to us according to the scriptures as the Sabbath. More, more on that in, in, in a moment. See, we, we believe that in order to express God as scripture reveals them, there are four things that must be present. Reconciliation is one of those critical things. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 18, that as followers of Jesus, we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. We have been given this ministry because we have been reconciled back to God through Jesus. The Sabbath, these are the days that are given to us to decipher what does it mean to be reconciled. It's the Sabbath. These are the days that we are given to discern what are my responsibilities to reconcile others? Be be because of the week we just came out of and are looking forward to, each of us has a vested interest into those around us according to what Jesus has done for us. Mm. See, the measure of the life of a Christian will be assessed on how we connect, reconnect, actually, those in our world, our friends, our relatives, acquaintances, our neighbors and our coworkers to God through Jesus. Our, our life will be assessed as followers of Jesus based on how we reconcile our world to God. Mm. And when we say connect, we don't simply mean mention, we mean model. Each of us has a daily duty to connect with people around us. We are to connect to others as Christ has connected to us. And, and how has Jesus connected to us? Well, he's done it even unto the point of death. Let me just pause and let that sit for a second because Many of us like to connect to others as long as it doesn't create a conflict mm -hmm. for, our, oh, for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I wish I had just a little bit of help because uh, if we are to be reconcilers, if we are to have the ministry of reconciliation, then it is important for us to be able to put that through the lens to sift that through the filter of our relationship with Christ. And to what degree was Jesus willing to reconcile the world to the point of death? Oh, oh, mm. oh, see, 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 see. How do you know that these are the days? You know that these are the days because the concept of reconciliation is countercultural. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know that these are the days because, you know, the concept of reconciliation is not only culturally out of step, it's religiously, amazingly untenable. We've, had, we've accepted the fact that, yeah, no, reconciliation was what Jesus had to do. That's not what he's expecting of you and I. Mm -hmm. We have come to believe that opposition is a problem that, that options equal the divine will of God. That when facing difficulties that come from dealing with people, choosing an option that presents less opposition is the will of God. Mm. It wasn't true in the garden. Right. And it ain't true today. <laughs> Connecting with people is to choose to be hurt. Mm. Connecting with people is to choose to be misunderstood. Mm. Connecting with people is to choose to be taken advantage of and abused. 
dare I say, even having certain aspects of who you've come to be die. Jesus died to connect us to God the Father. Did, did, did you catch that? Jesus would say that no one comes to the Father but by me, right? Am, am I in the book? In other words, if you want to get to heaven, if you want to get to where God is, you come this way. Amen. And the way that God leads us to him through Christ is through Calvary, which is to suggest, which is to say, which is to warn. Yeah. Mm. That's the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At some point in this journey of following Jesus, when connecting two people, something's going to have to mm -hmm. die. <clears throat> Within our world, we demonstrate reconciliation, not just through who, but how. Mm -hmm. Scripture reveals it is how we love our brothers. It's how we love our neighbors. And yes, even how we love our enemies. That proves rather or not we're disciples of Jesus. Amen. Let me, let me go over that list again. We prove that we have the discipline to reconcile based off of how we love our brothers, mm -hmm. love our neighbors, mm -hmm. and love our enemies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how have you disciplined your disappointments wow. this week? See, because if you're dealing with people, you're going to have to get used to girding up your loins, as the old folks used to say. Because disappointment is not demonic. It's life. People are going to keep peopling, Derek. That's right. <laughs> That's Stop disqualifying that which disappoints you because that's part of the development. Mm -hmm. Another pillar of iChurch DMV. Y'all all right? It's, it's, yeah. it's kind of quiet in here. And I got people in here. So y'all being quiet makes me nervous. <laughs> Another pillar for iChurch DMV is a twofer. Uh, it's relationship and reward. So the first pillar we went over was what? Reconciliation. Reconciliation. The second pillar, the second and the third, is relationship and reward. The fuel behind our discipleship to the who's and how is the why. In, in, in light of our relationship and because of our reward, we have the capacity to connect to others. Mm. Let me say that again. In light of our relationship, and because of our reward, we have the capacity to deal with people. Mm -hmm. Jesus is asked in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40, uh, this particular statement. It says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends all the law and the prophets. Mm. All of them. The second we have covered in reconciliation, the, the love your neighbor piece. And even though the text mentions two, I contend that there's actually three components in the text. It's loving God, loving your neighbor. But the third one, he says, love them as you love your self. self. So I contend that there are three. So again, the second in this trilogy is covered in reconciliation. But the two for the first and the third speak to relationships. Are you still with me? Mm -hmm. Our intention and our affections towards God and ourselves informs and empowers our connections with others. 
Mm-hmm. I'll say it again, just in case I lost you. Mm-hmm. If you're just thinking about it or you're taking notes, our intention and affection towards God and ourselves informs and empowers our connections to others. Poor non-existent or unhealthy relationships with those around us stem from poor non-existent unhealthy relationships with God and ourselves. Bad part. Yeah. I'm dealing with relationships. Yeah. And sometimes we're trying to justify why we're not relating to others, why we find ourselves disqualifying ourselves due to the disappointment of others because of the simple fact that we're not dealing with how we're mm. Dealing with God and ourselves. You can't, I can't, we can't relate to them to any greater capacity or degree than we have first related to God and ourselves. Yes. If we have an issue with them, Uh the issue ain't with them. Mm -hmm. Because they are whoever they are. Mm -hmm. Our job is to connect to them. Can you imagine getting to heaven and telling God that the person that he told you to connect with, you couldn't connect with because they were being who they are? Mm. (laughs) God knew who they were when he assigned you to. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So you're not informing God with your complaint about them. Mm Right. You're actually telling on yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> the Sabbath. <laughs> These are the days that we spend time divining and unraveling who we are and whose we are, lest we let what they say and what they need define and direct our identity. Mm-hmm. How many times, how many of us uh-huh. have found ourselves dreading Monday? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, 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 you have this wonderful weekend, and then all of a Sunday, Monday cometh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if you found yourself dreading Monday, might I suggest our concern for Monday is a cause or caused by our lack of care on Sunday. Mm, uh-huh. Being cared for by God causes us to care less about others. Well, now hear what I said. I said care less about them because we're supposed to care for them. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let me say it again. Y'all, y'all, y'all are stuck like on my first joke. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out memes and average. Do they mean the same thing? Yes, they mean the same thing. But here, care less and care for are not the same thing. Not the same thing. See, many of us put too much attention in the way that people feel about us and allow that to be the dictates, the terms of agreement as to rather or not we're going to do what we've been assigned by God to do. You're, you're supposed to care less how they feel Mm. how they act, Mm -hmm. what they do and what they say with respect to your assignment. Lord, I wish I had just a little bit of help. I got to pause parenthetically and just kind of put this back into the atmosphere because scripture reminds us that while we were yet enemies of God, Christ still took on the assignment. We were cursing the very nature of God when he still went to Calvary. Mm. Not only were we not interested in God, we killed the son and he still was willing. Mm -hmm. We spat at him. We crucified him. We talked about him. We Mm -hmm. Mm lied. And if you don't feel like you did that, how many times have you been silent when he's been maligned? All right. Mm -hmm. How many times should you have said something and you didn't? Mm -hmm. How many times you knew you were supposed to act in a way in alignment with his, but in order to be in alignment with them? Mm -hmm. See, when we 
don't pay attention as we should to the Sabbath. These are the days that come from them. Our idea and concept of relationship gets all twisted. And we put justifiers into our reasonings. I haven't said this in a minute, but it bears repeating here, Lisa, and, and then I'll move on. If you have to justify something, you've already admitted you're wrong. Mm. All right. Mm. If you're justifying something, you are already acknowledging that at least you have a perspective that agrees to the thing that you're trying not to do. Don't nobody like this kind of truth. Let me get back to my notes. Mm. When we remove our need for others' opinion about us, because we have God's opinion, Mm -hmm. we're better equipped to care about why we're connected. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Here's the key to relationships. You can't phone them in. You can't phone them in and expect to yield the full benefit from them. Right. Because Jesus said in the text that I just read in your hearing that I know you're familiar with, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, what word is the common denominator in that statement? All. all. D- d- did you catch that? Mm-hmm. All. Question, is God requiring more than you're giving him? Mm. Let me say that again for those that were distracted. Is God requiring more of you, from you, through you, then you're giving it. Where did you get your definition of relationship from? Because wherever you got it from, they're responsible for the benefits that you receive from it. Mm -hmm. Which leads us to the second side of the coin. Remember, I told you this was a twofer, right? Reward is the second part of the coin. Here at iChurch DMV, we don't believe that relationships are one-sided. Oh, Mm -hmm. Holy Mm -hmm. Ghost. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, we, we don't believe that they're one-sided. There is a recompense, a profit, a reward from relationship. The Bible tells us that there is fruit that comes from our relationship. In Galatians chapter number five, verse 22 and 23, it says, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things. Mm. There is no law. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath, these are the days that the reward of our relationship leads to a spirit-led life, which empowers us to operate outside of the laws. Lord, Mm -hmm. let let me say that one more again for the kids in the background. See, the reward from wrestling with relationships that go outside of what you're comfortable with is that you end up with fruit Mm -hmm. that nourishes, sustains, and empowers you to live beyond the laws or the restrictions of your current surroundings. Lord, let's see if I can work this out. See, this is where favor comes from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. This is why miracles happen. This is how super is placed on natural. Mm, mm -hmm. There are rewards for relationships that bring reconciliation. God will not leave you out there alone that if you died, if something in you died in order to connect to someone who disappointed you, God will not let you rot in that grave. Uh, and he will infuse you with his spirit and give you extra joy. I wish I had a little help. <laughs> He'll give you peace that surpasses understanding. Yes. He'll give you self-control when you should say something. Okay. When you're justified in doing something, he will hold your peace. And I had some yeah, folks. Yeah. 
who know about the rewards. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since there weren't as many hallelujahs as I expected on that. Mm. Can I ask you another question? Have you received your rewards from the relationship? Mm -hmm. Mm. Let me try the question another way. How many of the benefits, how much of the fruit is readily available to your life right now? Right now. <clears throat> See, throughout our week, we should be able to pull, access the fruit because we have a relationship Mm -hmm. because we're on assignment. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's ample spiritual access. How much of the fruit do you have at any given time? How much of it was available to you last week? Mm. How much love, joy, mm. peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control did you demonstrate last week? Hmm. See, the absence of the reward is the opportunity of the relationship. Oh, that was good. What we're missing during the week becomes what we focus on during the Sabbath. Hmm. Woo, God, I feel uh, like running. Let me say that again. I know I, I find myself repeating myself often, but I would be derelict in my responsibility if I just sped past something I believe the Lord gave for us to see lot about. The absence of the reward is the opportunity of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Whatever is presently missing is what we're supposed to come into the Sabbath focus on. Mm -hmm. If you demonstrated a lack of patience last week, mm -hmm. when you come into the Sabbath, this is what you're supposed to be talking to God about. Mm -hmm. If love was an empty tank last week, your conversation with God on the day he has assigned mm -hmm. is supposed to be focused on what you know you need his help with. Yes, God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what should you be talking to God about right now based on last week's missed opportunity? Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus was referring to when he was talking to the woman at the well. That believe me, honey, a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers mm -hmm. will worship God in spirit, spirit-filled gifts, mm -hmm. and in truth, the truth about where I really am. Woo. Yes, Lord. Those are the kinds of worshipers yes. that the mm -hmm. Father seeks after. It's not about your praise team. It's not about the power of your preacher. It's about how you pay attention to the truth. Mm -hmm. And the conversation you have with your God. Amen. Amen. Are you still Amen. here? What do you need to be talking to him about right now? This is leading us to the last pillar. Am I boring you? Not at all. Not at all. The Sabbath. These are the days, Frank, for rest. Oh. The last pillar. I mentioned it at the beginning. Here's where we're going to land and bring this plane in. The Sabbath, these are the days for rest. Woo. Mm -hmm. Anybody else tired? <laughs> and I don't mean sleepy. Right. It's a difference. I mean, you can be sleepy, but if anybody else just, <clears throat> you got to say it mm -hmm. with a little melanin. Tie. Tie. No R. Tie. No R. <laughs> These are the days for rest. Because all of these pillars rest on rest here at iChurch DMV. Some of you all may recall that we did a series on the dynamics of rest. 
But for the sake of time, I will just simply say that anyone who desires to pursue purpose, accomplish a task, a goal, an assignment, yet fails to incorporate rest undermines what they are created to do. Hmm. Can I say that again for all my A-type personalities, all my hustlers, all those striving to make it happen, or all those struggling just to make ends meet? Can I just say this? In all of that, if you don't incorporate rest, you won't make it. Let me, let me, let me add this to it. If you make it to what you're striving for without incorporating rest, when you get there, it won't be worth it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> Rest is so important to God that God modeled it for us. Think about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. You and I are informed through scripture that we have been created in the image of God, uh -huh. in the image of the Omago Day. Uh -huh. And God rested. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. did, did you catch that? Mm -hmm. Rest is given its own day. Mm -hmm. oh, my. It shares its duties with no one and nothing else. Mm. Oh, y'all so spiritual. No one, nothing else. See, the other six days in the creation narrative all have multiple activities. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. But on the seventh day, the Bible says that God finished his work and he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because he rested. Mm. Jesus. Mm. <laughs> There's so much in it, I ain't got time to do it. But I'm just, I'm just underscoring, I'm highlighting some of the key points. Do you know, let me just say this last piece about it. Do you know that there's not even an acknowledgement of night nor day on the seventh day? Hmm, just rest. Riddle me this. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's mind blowing because in each of the days leading into the conclusion, uh -huh. mm -hmm. God is outlining the critical things that he began at the beginning that are still in effect. Right. And he divides those things by day and by night. But when we get to rest, oh, mm, when we get to the Sabbath, yes. mm, he just says, sit down. Mm, mm. yes, Be still uh, yes, God. Mm, and know. Mm. Just know. Mm. Yes, mm. Uh, yes. <laughs> Ooh, be still. Mm. So you can figure out what you know. Mm. Yes, God. Be still. Don't move. Don't do. Don't even speak. Mm. Just be still. Rest. I gotta, I gotta stop. Mm -hmm. But I can't help but wonder if the reason why so many of us are tired. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's because you're not still. You, you have not incorporated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And that's why these are the days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're having a hard time negotiating, figuring out, understanding what to do, how to do it, why to do it. It's because hmm. we're not handling the Sabbath well. Mm -hmm. As in the days of Christ, so it is today. The Sabbath is suspect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Rest. I, I, I got to get out of this, and I'll probably get in a little bit of trouble for this. This is this is 
This is the dilemma that I am wrestling with in this dispensation of the church universal and our church specifically, which is why, you know, we've spent some time talking about what we, I church DMV believe, because in this season, we're wrestling with what the church looks like in, in, in its expression. And today we're doing that somewhat successfully in a hybrid expression. We have people in the building. We have people that are local that are streaming on our platform and we are streaming out into the masses all because I believe God is challenging us to create an opportunity for a Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you come into the Sabbath needing different things. But if you're locked into a certain way or an only way of doing them, you don't get the Sabbath experience that you need according to the week you came out of and the week you're going into. Right. Mm -hmm. So what that means for us at iChurch right now, even though we're standing on these four pillars, is that every now and again, trying to stand on all of them means that we're losing our footing. As we're putting them in the ground. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, or fortunately, a lot of people don't like the adjustment for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just want it right for them. Mm -hmm. They want it to align with whatever parameters they've set up, and they're missing the point of the Sabbath. Yeah. They're missing what we're supposed to be coming into this moment. Achieving. Mm -hmm. So we come out of this moment being who he called us to be. I, I'm, I'm off. Let me get back to my notes. It's in our commitment to rest that we're able to properly reflect the image of God in which we've been created. And what is the image of God? What is it about these days, this day, the Sabbath? It reveals that we both need to know and make God known mm -hmm. as he desires to be known, mm -hmm. which is love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath, these are the days when we rest in the love of God so we can make known God's love. But when you get to this place, and you're still, and you quiet your world. Car wreck should have took me out. Mm -hmm. That part. The loss of that stream of income should have buried me mm -hmm. by now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The heartbreak from that person leaving should have caused me not to want to get out of bed. Mm. Mm. See, when you rest in the stillness and you see what occurred during the week and the fact that you're still here. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I saw somebody post this the other day and, and, and it was so simple. It was profound. He said, many people, when they're stressed and they're straining, are looking for miracles, and they overlook some of the most dynamic that are right there present. The fact that your family makes it home every evening. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Glory, God. Yes. Listen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Listen. The fact... Hmm that you have food in your refrigerator. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Access to running clean water. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. See, when you're not still, it's difficult to miss the real time 
love of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real time. These are the days when we rest in the love of God, the Sabbath, so that we can reflect and share God's love. Only then are we able to take note of when things are off around us. See, if you're in the whirlwind, it's difficult to discern what's moving because you are. <laughs> but when you're still, oh my, <laughs> you're able to see what's out of place and thereby who needs to be around you to make things better. Our text opens up by saying, on a Sabbath. Then in verse six, it goes on to say, on another Sabbath. In these days, Jesus from a rested place noticed the restlessness of his time and connected himself to a team whom he would reconcile the world around them and to come through relationship by reward. <laughs> I'm done. But I do have one more question for you. Who do you have around you that you're investing in? Mm -hmm. Not that you're waiting to make investments into you. Who do you have around you that you're making investments in? What has your Sabbath revealed about those you have chosen? Hmm. Here at iChurch, I believe in being and making disciples. We operate from an informed and empowered position because we ourselves have been chosen. <laughs> we first need to know and accept that we've been chosen. If you're under the sound of my voice, Jesus chose you. He chose you to rest in him so that you might learn and develop your relationship with him. And as you do, you will discover the rewards that come from him so that you can be an instrument, a conduit of reconciliation for the world back to God the Father through him. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, Take the Sabbath. Hmm. You'll miss all of that. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and you'll be in the rat race. Mm -hmm. Running from here to there to everywhere, being this to that person and that to that person and this. Da -da 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 and you think sleeping is rest. Hmm. Say it again. Say that. Say that again. That's right. You know sleeping isn't rest because you wake up tired. That's all. Right. Hallelujah. That's right. If you've slept all that you can sleep and you still get up unsettled, mm -hmm. you haven't rested. You haven't rested. And you haven't rested because you put more faith in the Sandman mm -hmm. than in the Savior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are to make disciples, which means because we're chosen, who we choose to connect with matters because they matter to God. The second biggest choice Jesus made according to scripture He chose who he was going to do life with. Mm -hmm. Who are the people in your neighborhood? <laughs> in your neighbor. <laughs> in your neighborhood. These are the people. Mm -hmm. Do you know you've been chosen? He chose you to love you. Thank you, God. Thank Don't you. miss this. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. 
Soak in that love, understand that love, be refreshed, renewed, revived, restored by that love. But don't just look at your life as a sponge that soaks things up. Be ready to be wrung out. Mm -hmm. Because a sponge that keeps the liquid starts to stink. Mm. Yes. It's in the ringing out. Yes, God. Mm-hmm. Yes, God. Yep. It's clean. That you get cleaned out. Uh. And somebody else gets refreshed. Mm-hmm. But they get refreshed as you're being emptied. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes up. Sometimes not. It is all to the glory of God. Mm-hmm. I got to stop. But can I challenge you to look around? Figure out who you're going to invest in. Figure out the cost of your investment. And see it to the end. Let's pray. Father, how we love you and thank you. We ask even now that something was said or done that aligns with your will, your word, your work, and your way. Thank you for the privilege of today. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Show us how to properly participate with you so that you might be able to get out of our life what you created it for. Thank you for those that are streaming live, those that are local and live, and those that are present. May your presence produce what you allowed us to participate for. For this is our prayer. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. Can you do me a favor and put something on it right where you are? In your home, on your job, in your car, do something in an effort to acknowledge just the simple fact that God decided to say something to you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that's important that many of us take for granted is because God doesn't have to say anything. Anything. (laughs) Scripture gives us an example of the silence of God uh-huh. in, in, in that blank page that separates the Old and the New Testament in all of our Bibles. The digital formats don't give you that, but for those of us that still like printed copies, the, the, the printed copy gives you a blank page to show a, a line of demarcation between the old covenant mm. and the new one. And that blank page, even though it has nothing on it, it signals God's silence. Hmm. And and if we put time in the signaling of God's silence, it's 400 years. Let me just Mm -hmm. let that soak in for a second. That that God has in his history a period in the earth where he chose not to say anything to creation for 400 years. Now let's pause for a second. We keep wondering when God's going to say something about this current situation. Come on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're impatient. Now, he said something two weeks ago about the last one, but we want him to hurry up and say something about this one as if God is obligated to say anything. Mm. What we don't want is for him to choose to say nothing because if he chooses to act in a way that he has before, and he does anything close to a 400 year silence. Well, let's just say 400 years ago, it was 1600 something. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, y'all, y'all missed it. Mm-hmm. Y'all missed a good place to shout. <laughs> what was the world doing in the 1600s? Mm-hmm. Imagine there not being a word from God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Since the 1600s. This nation we sit in would not have been divinely inspired. Yeah. Right. Okay. 
many of the advances that we take advantage of on all levels yes. would not have been divinely inspired regardless of who may have taken credit for it. Mm -hmm. If he was silent, this would be caveman land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I say that because sometimes we're missing the miracle in our moment. Yes. And resting, being still in the Sabbath gives you a level of appreciation for when he does speak or how to hear what he is saying in the midst of all of it. Mm -hmm. That can change so much. So we're getting ready to move to the next phase of our worship experience. And this is one that I'm going to challenge you to hear from God concerning. Don't just go into it this to the degree that I've attempted is a Sabbath day. There's work that comes from this moment that each of us has a responsibility to align ourselves with God to incorporate into our coming week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I say that one more time? What happens in the Sabbath affects what happens in the other six days. Mm, mm -hmm. So we need to know that we're hearing or we're in alignment with God so that we can associate and incorporate our week accordingly. Reconciliation comes out of this. People are connected back to God because of this moment. You can participate corporately in that connection by supporting the ministry that feeds you. If there's been any benefit, any joy, any goodness that has come from our time together today or in recent weeks, months, or at this point, almost two decades, I'm gonna ask you to talk to God about how you can. Don't just come in here, well, you know, I have it on autopilot or da da da. Great, appreciate that. But if you tithe, then maybe. <laughs> Are you giving all that you're supposed? It's not an unfair question to ask on the Sabbath, right? It's offering time. Amen. It's time for us to participate in the continuation mm -hmm. of the work. So ask God, what part do you play? What role can you participate in? Now I'm saying that to you because I've been informed that today we need $2,000, 2000 To God, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. To some of us, it may have just sounded like I said 2 million. Mm -hmm. I get it. But to others, it didn't sound like anything to you. But what scripture informs us is that if you don't ask, mm -hmm. you won't receive. I just simply believe that God is no shorter than his word. I'm putting it out there. It's on him to do. But I know he does it through people. Amen. Amen. I have a saying that I've coined that I will put here and then I'll stop. I challenge people, don't make me discern what we can discuss. Hmm. There's no question that God can send a ram a word. He can send a messenger pigeon. He can cause your second great uncle to call you at a certain time in order to confirm for you what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. Or he can just simply say some, something to you plainly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, if you don't have it, I'm not talking. <laughs> don't put your mortgage money. Please. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? Right. That's not. But somebody, that's not the question. The kingdom has need of all of our participation. Govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Can the church say, Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the privilege, the honor, and the joy 
for corporate worship. We presently are not having to hide this moment. Mm. <laughs> We're not doing this in some bunker on some radio wave, but we're able to share the goodness of the Lord with anybody we freely desire. Mm -hmm. We at this present moment can say Jesus and not fear somebody's gonna come and arrest or kill us. <laughs> that was not so when scripture was written. Mm -hmm. But because of the work of those who received the word from that time till now, we have that liberty. So woe be it unto us if we don't participate and finance the kingdom so that future generations can share in that same freedom. Bless the seeds that are being given even now. Bless the seeds that will be given when this moment is over. Let them be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. amen. I ask you to give a blessing unto God for the word. Can, can you bless God for the fact that people are deciding to give even now? Thank you, Jesus. All right, beloved, we're now getting ready to come off of our live stream and go to our local and our in-person for takeaways. Can I just challenge you before we do for everyone to consider, what was your takeaway from the day? What did you gain? What did you hear about um, your relationship with God that you're going to leave this moment with? But as always, when it comes to takeaways here at iChurch DMV, you don't just simply take it away for yourself. You take it away for you and to give it away to someone else. God didn't invite any of us to this moment for us to hoard it, but to share it. So I'll challenge you if there was something that you heard, who are you going to hand it to? Mm -hmm. You might be the only gospel they get. You might be the only good news they receive. So what role will you play? And in whose life? Who will you choose? as Jesus chose his 12. Father, we thank you for the privilege, the honor and the joy for being able to share in this Christian ministry for the benefit of your kingdom. For these are the days for the children of God on the Sabbath. For it's in the name of Jesus and all of God's children say it. Amen. Amen. God bless family. Peace. All right, beloved.